If you can't force it, go to court. The House just gave itself the ability to essentially go to court in order to enforce subpoenas. House Judiciary Ranking Member Doug Collins says this sets a dangerous precedent for future Congresses under either party's control. Congressman, very good to have you back with us. Neil, it's always good to be with you. What's your fear here? Well, my fear is, is that we're getting we're getting into such a habit of rushing to judgment with this Democratic majority that they don't want to wait for anything. They don't want to go through the procedures that are institutionally functional for this House. There are proper ways to go about things, and one of the ways is, is that if you have a subpoena that it's not being complied with, the question is, have you used all constitutional remedies that are afforded to us to find out how we can actually get the information? And that's not happening now, and especially yesterday, with, whether it would be with Bill Barr, where the chairman asked for something that he has admitted was illegal for him to ask for, or Don McGahn, who actually is being asked for stuff that is not under his, his papers are not under his control, they're under the White House's control. What we did yesterday was not make it necessarily easier. We let, it, we let them hide their moderate members and other members who didn't want to continue to vote on contempt because they felt that these investigations were going too far and voters wasn't with them. That's all we did yesterday was make it easier to go to court, but also made it easier for them to bypass rules that in the future may undercut our legal arguments in court. What I also wonder about, Congressman, is if you help a little bit, you don't get any credit for that. So when they were bemoaning the fact that, uh, you know, Attorney General Barr wasn't being cooperative, yet the Justice Department did provide a number of documents that they had requested pertaining to obstruction issues that they sorely wanted to get their hands on, it, it was ignored. It was, it was like, oh, yeah, you, you, you cooperated there, but they, that doesn't matter. I, I, I think that is a slippery slope, too. Well, it's a very slippery slope. When you're desperately saying you've got to have these information, these papers to do your congressional oversight, which I value congressional oversight, the problem is, though, is if you won't accept what they're giving, then really what you're doing to the process is saying, no, we're going to pitch a temper tantrum in the middle of the hallway and say, until you give us everything, we're not going to take anything. And Neil, it should be noted, your viewers should know that my chairman still has not read the unredacted portions of the Mueller report that he screamed that he needs so much for uh, his investigation. Now, I He's never about taken that, too, and we've to reach out, no answers and all of that, but uh, if that was such a big thing to you, then why hasn't he read it? Has he ever explained to you why not? Because it's out of principle, he's got to get everything or, or nothing? It's because the Democrats have stuck together and said that we want it all or nothing, but he's in a very bad spot here because but he's what got he's 98% asked... of what he wants, right? Oh, it, exactly. And look, it just undercuts his argument. When he goes to court and the judge asks them, how did you actually go about the business of trying to get some of this information? And when the other attorneys, when the Department of Justice says, look, here's what we offered, here's what we've given, the judge is going to look back and say, why are you in my courtroom? They're going to go back and say, go do your due diligence and work with each other because you're wasting my time. And that's what I mean by the long-term implications of how it could hurt the House, even no matter who is in the majority, we've got to do things the proper way. That's what the legal system is based on. All right, but uh, I, I don't know if you're a lawyer. I'm not. Uh, I no, am. Okay, there you go. So I'm talking to an expert. But grand jury testimony and stuff like that cannot be, you know, exactly released right. by law. So if, if, if among the 2% of material that's not there includes this grand jury testimony, you're, you're, you're just shooting it in the dark. You know you're never going to get it. Well, but yet, but as long as he can go in front of a camera somewhere on maybe a friendlier uh, venue and say that I need this information and they don't ask him the question, is it legal for you to get, then he can make the smoke screen say, well, oh, no, we're fighting for you. The truth and reality is he is admitted, and, and the, his own witnesses at a hearing we had earlier admitted, you cannot ask for the grand jury information that you're asking from Bill Barr. It's illegal for him to answer your subpoena. Now, what is interesting is that our majority could put forth a bill and change the law to where that Congress could actually access and certain circumstances, 6 e information. The majority's not went there. They know that people don't want to see that. They would rather skirt the edges and make the assumption that the president is getting impeached, while at the same time they know they're not. Do we know, I'm, I'm switching gears a little bit, Congressman, about when the inspector general's report is coming out on all of this and how it was handled? That, 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 that obviously could be the, the latest volcano here, but what, what are you hearing? We're hearing probably a little bit later in the next few weeks. We're hoping to hear that come out. There's no set date, but we, uh, from the Attorney the Inspector General's office, we have heard that it will be this summer, hopefully within the next few weeks. And yes, this will change the narrative because it goes back to the narrative that many of us have talked about is why we got here to start with. And it's going to show that the abuses in the FISA system, the FISA court, we believe, that was used by the corrupt cabal of Comey, McCabe, and Page, and Strzok, and these folks to actually start going after American citizens and using the court in a way that shouldn't be used. And that should 
bother everyone. I don't but care what, what the inspector general's report ultimately doesn't say that. I mean, that's I, what a lot of people expect it will say, but we don't know. Well, I, I think there's a little more than non expected I think when you look at the evidence that many of us have seen, we followed this now for two years. There's right. some issues. I mean, when James Comey went on and said that he later on said these were salacious and unverified, he actually uh, attested that they were verified. I mean, that right there is in and of itself a problem, and that's just one minor detail of this. So as we get into this, we believe that there will be things that come out of the Horowitz report. But remember that Durham, uh, uh, you know, the U.S. Attorney Durham, who's been uh, assigned by the Attorney General to look into this, has full uh, plenary powers to go after everything that he needs to find out what was happening with these investigators. How did it get started? That's why I believe you're seeing a lot of these who originally started this are out telling new stories now because they want to try and rehabilitate themselves before some of this actually gets shed light on. I am thoroughly confused. Congressman, thank you very, very <laughs> much. It's always good chatting with you.